we got three. Hey! Hey! Is your audio on? Hey! 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 How are you, Matthew? Here's Liz. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, so lovely to see you guys. Likewise, it's great to see you too. I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so nice that you guys are all hunkered down as a family. Yes. Yeah. That is one of the gifts of this, is that <laughs> we have been able to delight in having meals together and playing outside together when it's nice weather. <laughs> yeah. Gift. Who, who is in your household right now? We have Sarah home. Okay. Sarah came back from university. She was, uh, she was studying in, um, in the Netherlands. That's right. Mm -hmm. And her yeah. trip got cut short. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it took us a little while for us to say, please come. Please come. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm very glad to introduce Julie Cool, a friend of mine that uh, our, our families have been friends for nine years, is it? Did we meet at Tizay in 2011? It would be that long, yeah. Wow. And um, the Cool Fergus family has come to visit us in Chatham, and the Marque Yarborough family has come to visit you in Gatineau, uh, outside of Ottawa, north of the border. And uh, we are so grateful that our friendship has spanned the years, and it's nice to, to see your face, and it was nice to talk with you and Greg briefly. Um, so, Julie, tell us about what, um, what you do, what some of your ministry has been, um, maybe what it is now, um, just as a, a brief introduction to who you are. Sure. So, um, for a, a long while, I was in pastoral ministry in a parish uh, where I did... Uh, catechesis with uh, with families so faith formation with uh, with families um, and uh, I was called up to the diocesan level three years ago uh, to be the director of pastoral services at the Archdiocese of Gatineau so now I work with parishes throughout the diocese of urban parishes and rural parishes. Wow is is that a full-time responsibility? It is wow. it is and how much travel are you doing? I mean, now with the pandemic, you're not doing much, but in an, on a normal pre-pandemic schedule, would you be going throughout the diocese? I do. I love to go out. I love to, to visit the parishes. I love to visit, uh, uh, I, I go to Sunday worship at different parishes uh, every Sunday to, so that I can meet people where they are uh, and the whole diversity of the, the parishes in our diocese. Hmm. What is the diversity of the diocese like? So we have urban parishes, and um, in Quebec, there, there's uh, not many Quebecers continue to practice um, you know, on Sundays. Um, so what we see in our urban parishes is a lot of families who come, come from abroad, um, from Haiti or from uh, African families, um, make up the bulk of our urban parishes. And so it's very dynamic and colorful and uh, um, lively uh, um, celebrations. Uh, in, the, uh, in the rural areas, um, that's where we have um, mostly French Quebec uh, families, uh, older communities, uh, places which are emptying out. And so the whole community is, isn't very strong. And those parishes are are struggling sometimes, but uh, but a close sense of community in those in those uh, in those areas. And we see that during this pandemic time, uh, where people are looking out for one another in, in those rural areas. And then English here, of course, is a minority uh, community, so we have English-speaking parishes uh, throughout the diocese as well. So you're working with French-speaking and English-speaking parishes. That's right. And, and other languages? Are there other um, congregations that speak another language? We have uh, two Portuguese communities uh, and one uh, Hispanic community. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. It is. It is. Very dynamic and diverse. I, I think in the Greater New Jersey Conference on any given Sunday, there are 11 languages spoken. 
It's one of the most diverse uh, conferences in the US and our district, which is in the New York metro area, is the most diverse of those districts. Um, it's really quite beautiful to uh, go to district meetings and, and be a part of such a multicultural expression of United Methodism. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, what, what are signs of hope that you see in the midst of this pandemic? Um, signs of hope that God is doing something. Um, st sometimes it's hard to know what God is doing in the midst of all this, but you can answer that any way you wish. I'm, I'm seeking wisdom from various people as to where they see hope, where they see a sense of God's handiwork. Mm. I see a sense of gratitude for frontline workers uh, that I think is just beautiful. Um, and, and I feel it when I go to the grocery store, I feel a great sense of gratitude that these people are showing up for work uh, to, to keep this, the shelves stocked so that we can continue to eat. Um, and I see that among people I speak to, the, that gratitude for the people taking care of our seniors, seniors' residences, for the people working in the hospitals, um, uh, for the people who continue to show up and uh, at some risk to themselves. And I'm hoping that they will continue to value the kind, those kinds of services. Uh, for me, that's a great sense of, of, of hope. Um, yeah, and I hope that lasts beyond the pandemic, that sense of gratitude and that sense of um, expressing gratitude to people in the grocery stores and people wearing medical scrubs. I, I hope that that lasts for, a, I hope that becomes the new norm. Mm, so just this week, uh, a friend of mine shared a beautiful story. Uh, in, 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 in Quebec, it's not very typical to tell, to, to, to tell people that you're praying for them. I don't know if it's the same where you are, but it's not something that you would normally tell somebody at a grocery store that you're praying for them. Um, but uh, she ordered her groceries online, and the person at the other end was just so compassionate and so kind. And so she said, I, 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 I'd like to ask your name. And so the woman said, my name is Charlotte. I said, Charlotte, I just want you to know that I'm praying for you, that I pray for all of you twice a day. Oh, how and, beautiful. And, she, and, and Charlotte broke into tears, and my friend broke into tears, and this is all happening on the phone. Um, and when she went to pick up her, her groceries, um, she, she was watching them put the groceries in her car, and they put the groceries in, and then they put in a bouquet of flowers. And so she said, oh no, the, I didn't order flowers. And so they looked carefully and they said, no, no, the flowers are for you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Charlotte had told everyone in the grocery store that, that this woman was praying for them. And, oh. and those moments of uh, just slowing down and paying attention, I think, are beautiful signs of hope for this time. Oh, that is a beautiful image. Mm. Hmm. That's a story that needs to be told. It is, yeah, yeah. In the midst of your um, caring for parishes and churches and family and neighbors, um, what spiritual resources have you either discovered or rediscovered that are bringing you a sense of um, encouragement, energy, uh, empowerment, peace, what, what spiritual resources have been meaningful to you in this time? I would have to say that opening up scripture with, uh, with others has been extremely rich for me. Um, on Sundays when I can't go to mass, uh, I've, I've, I've launched an invitation on Facebook just saying, Anybody who would like to come together to break open the scriptures uh, today, join me. And the most surprising people join. Uh, and together we, we pray and we read the scripture together and we reflect on it. Uh, and those have been grace-filled moments for, for me um, 
that I don't, I really, I don't often take the time to just uh, be still for an hour with people around me to break open scripture. And that's been a very uh, rich find for me during this time. Ah, that's good. And, and the, are there certain scriptures that you're turning to or, or um, is there a, a, a devotional booklet that you use to find those scriptures to break open? Uh, we're, we're just doing the, the readings of the day. So on this any Sunday, we're doing the, the, the readings of the Sunday liturgy. Okay. So it's, it's the lectionary. I think we're it's probably, lectionary. we share the same yeah. lectionary. Yeah. And another, another uh, um, thing that I found was um, the Jesuits have a, uh, a pray as you go app. Um, yeah. And it has the readings of the day. Uh, with some music and some time for reflection, a, a silent time. And I, ha- I find that it helps me to stay focused during a time of prayer. They have a beautiful, they've done a, a little, a, a little uh, novelty this, this time. They've done a Pray As You Stay app. Oh, really? It, oh, I and, can write that down. Oh, yeah. So their, their Pray As You Stay app, um, uh, uh, I've been doing that with a group of people so that we, we do the reflections every day and then we come together uh, one evening of the week to discuss it. Um, but they're very beautiful and they deal with the anxiety that people are going through at this time. Uh, bring scripture to bear on that uh, and uh, beautiful music. So they're beautiful reflections. I've, I've listened to the Pray As You Go app on occasion and, and very often they'll have a Tizé chant as part of the music or even um, I've heard Lady Smith Black Mombazo yes. as some of the music um, and sometimes it's a, a, an even song or a choral piece from some great cathedral choir. Yes. And it's, it's quite beautiful. And then to end with the Gloria Patri, um, which begins with the one voice and then two voices and then a, a, a chorus of people saying the Gloria Patri together. Mm-hmm. Um, I find that very meaningful. It is very much so. Yeah, I find it a beautiful way to just uh, help me to stay focused in the time of prayer. Oh, that's good. Hey, I, I discovered a, a, a passage recently in um, an app that I use from Contemplative Outreach, which is a really good app. It's a free app, and um, they've got wonderful prayers, scriptures, the sound of uh, singing bowls to kind of enter into a time of prayer, a a meditation timer that you can set for however long you wish, which I find helpful because I'm not, you know, sitting there in the silence thinking, Surely my time must be over. Um, <laughs> and and the, the scripture that I, I don't think I'd ever heard in, in light, I, I don't think I've ever heard it in, in a way that I hear it now, is from Isaiah 30, verse 15. And it's, this is one translation. This is the New Revised Standard Version. In returning and rest, you shall be saved in quietness, and in trust shall be your strength. For contemplatives, that is good food and good encouragement. For those who understand the contemplative way, um, it really honors and lifts up quietness, which some of us are, are, are experiencing in ways we've never had to before, never experienced right. before. Um, it's- Beautiful for today, our times now. Yeah. 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 I, I don't believe God causes these things to happen, but in the midst of this, um, there are great opportunities for us as, a, as individuals in the spiritual life and uh, as Christians and as the whole human family to discover something new. And, and I think a lot of people are going inside in ways they've never done before. And I have, I have great hope for that. I think inside, but I think also by reaching out. Uh, I'm connecting with people I haven't uh, taken the time to, to connect with in, in some time. So right. I think that the, the more we go in, the more it also pushes us out into the world. Eh? Yeah. So both movements, which are beautiful. Elizabeth O'Connor wrote a book. Uh, she was part of the Church of the Savior in Washington, D.C. Uh, with Gordon Cosby. And she wrote this book called Journey Inward, Journey Outward. 
and it, it is just what you say, it is to go inward. Ultimately, the fruits of that is that we go outward, but in a, with a new stance, with a new energy, with a new purpose. Um, they're both intricate, intricately woven together and both holy m movements. And may this time then allow us to go deeper in that, that we might come out of this kind of isolation. Yeah. Renewed, huh? Yeah. I am hoping for a wave of empathy to, to, to wash over the whole world, that this may awaken in us a compassion we didn't even know was possible. Um, I, I hold that hope out because I, I see glimpses of it. I hope it will um, last longer than the isolation. I, and also, I think a, a gratitude for human contact. Huh? Yeah. I, I think we take that for granted um, so often. And, uh, and I, I, I yearn for coming back together with people. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, I hope that we, we have that gratitude that, that will, will stay with us for the gift of one another. Yeah. Yeah, I think when we finally get back into our sanctuary and can worship again together, uh, I think I'm just going to weep. <laughs> uh, with, with gratitude that, you know, we took for granted how easy it was to worship with one another and to come to the table together. And now we, we can't take that for granted. Yeah. How... Um, this is not a question that I ask everybody, but our, our denomination is um, kind of split on the Eucharist. Some Methodists are practicing online Eucharist, others are not. I'm choosing to not celebrate at this time as a way of um, honoring the ecumenical dialogue that has happened over the last 100 years to try and bring us to a oneness in Christ. And when denominations such as the United Methodists um, give permission to practice online Eucharist, it sets us back decades in the ecumenical conversation around the table, around Eucharist, and what is Eucharist. And our early Methodism, we had circuit riders, and it would take sometimes four or five months for a pastor to ride his horse to a congregation where they would celebrate communion together, and, and we would, you know, fast and from the Eucharist. For Roman Catholics, the Eucharist is so central to the Mass. How are you and your congregations talking about, in, in this, I understand you kind of watch the priest celebrate the Eucharist on behalf of everybody who's watching the Mass on, online. How do you encourage people to um, how do you deal with that? I don't even know what my question is, but how do you navigate the not being able to celebrate Eucharist together because of the isolation? I think it's an unfolding, uh, um, the French word comes to mind, prise de conscience. It's an un unfolding awareness, an unfolding um, and an evolving understanding of what is the proper stance in this, right? So at the beginning, um, the thing to do was to try to figure out how to to a live cast the the mass right um, and and that was seen as being proactive and, and doing something and it was and it was the best response that we could come to, uh, uh, to in a very short period of time and hats off to those who managed to make that work um, and we issued uh, prayers of spiritual communion so that people can pray as they watch their pastors celebrating the Mass, uh, a prayer of spiritual communion with that Mass. Um, um, but I think that some people are moving beyond, uh, beyond that as an option. I think that that option meets the needs of certain people, and we can't discount that. But... Others are, are looking at other uh, avenues to encourage people to, to worship um, and to, 
to hold our hunger for the Eucharist to a time when we can gather around the table together. Uh, and as you say, you know, that's, this has happened in other times in our history. So to, to, to um, focus on, on the table of the word at this time. So we have a, a publisher um, in Quebec that has uh, put together uh, a series to help people do a lecture divina of the readings of the coming week. Uh, so to encourage parishes to set up, uh, encourage people to set up uh, reflections around the word um, and then have a celebration of the word uh, on Sundays. Mm, mm. And, and so uh, they're, they're, they're rolling out that, that resource and, and training people in the coming week uh, on how to use that. And I think that that has a lot of uh, benefit um, I think it's, it's, uh, I think that that's where we need to, to be, um, and to hold on to that hunger that we have for, for mm -hmm. community, for communion, uh, in both its senses, the communion mm -hmm. with one another, uh, and the communion in the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. it, it may create a deeper appreciation for that communion and community by holding the hunger and not uh, satisfying that hunger. That's correct. That's correct. And in the meantime, let's, um, you know, I, I love how you talk about ecumenical dialogue, you know, let us uh, find our commonality in mm -hmm. the word of God. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's deepen that, uh, that uh, uh, recognizing the wealth uh, of that for our, our spiritual lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we could talk for a long time, couldn't we, Julie? <laughs> we could indeed. <laughs> Back to Teze days. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was so delightful when we were at Teze to be able to just kind of roll out of our, our family's barracks and walk to worship together or walk to breakfast together and have such ease of conversation. Mm, indeed. Julie, my, uh, our family often says, oh, I wish we lived closer to uh, the Cool Fergus family. We would love to just be able to have a meal together and, and catch up. But this is a pretty close second. I'm, I'm grateful for the technology. Indeed, as am I. Hey, to close this uh, uh, part of the conversation, would you be willing to say a prayer for us here in New Jersey? And, and I would say a prayer for you and your parishes in, in Gatineau. I would love that. All right, I'll, I'll pray first and then you can pray. Let us pray. God, we give thanks for the technology and the spirit that binds us all together as one human family. Uh, we give thanks for this conversation uh, with our families and with one another. We give thanks for the friendship that your spirit has nurtured over the years. We ask your blessing on Julie as she uh, ministers and provides pastoral care and wisdom for the parishes in and around Gatineau. Uh, and in that whole diocese. Bless them with your Holy Spirit that helps them to be brave and faithful followers of Jesus. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. Lord, we give thanks for this time of going deeper within. May we take this time to encounter you, to listen more deeply to where it is that you call us. So may we take this time to listen more deeply to the cries of the people around us, to the needs of the world around us. I give thanks for, for Jeff and Julie and their family, for the, the, your parish community that continues to be a beacon of light in the world around you. May you continue to be sustained by the loving arms of our Lord. May you continue to be beacons of light and of love and the salt of the earth in your communities in the midst of this time. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thanks so much for the invitation. Give my love to Greg and your kids and uh, Let's connect again soon. That would be wonderful. Thanks so much, Jeff. Okay. Bye, Julie. Bye now.